Welcome traders. We're going to get going here in 30 seconds. Just going to give it another 30 seconds before we start. Okay, that is 1 p.m. British summertime. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we get going today, we, uh, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself after I graduated from university. I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search, uh, primarily focused on technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that time, day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I upped not just my technical gain in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering positive annual returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook where I break down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for a a few markets that I'm actively tracking, and I share these through the Tickmill TradingView account. I also run Tickmill's eMini Strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market plan for the cash New York trading session uh, for the S&P 500, giving my bias for the day ahead, specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. And these pre-market plans have delivered over 3,500 points in profit since we launched the service just over 18 months ago. Second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Telegram trading group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, 
I share an in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York cash trading session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's charts. I would say before I start, if, uh, if you have any questions, make a note of those in the chat and I will come back at the end and uh, we'll review those and I'll cover them off before we finish the session. Uh, equally, if there's an instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my charts here, you can also just type that into the chat and I'll give you a view on that instrument at the end of my presentation. Okay, let's get things going. So the S&P 500 using the E-mini futures contract here, uh, we are tracking a potential five wave sequence from the June lows. So we have a one, two, currently have a wave three here. And what I'm looking for is a wave four low, and then I'm gonna be targeting a fifth wave extension to the upside. So where am I anticipating that that wave four low will develop? Well, ideally what we'll get is a move, something like this into test this uh, 4100, 4080 area. From there, I'm gonna be looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. My minimum upside objective for those of you who attend on a weekly basis, you'll hopefully know what I'm talking about now is a five equals one. So we're looking for a fifth wave that at a minimum equals the first wave uh, from our wave four low. So if we get a wave four low that prints in and around this 4100, 4080 area, then our fifth wave extension target is going to be 4400 on the upside. Now, that also coincides with the yearly pivot point. It, what it would also do is it would take out this um, trend line resistance on the weekly time frame. Now, this is, uh, this is something to, to think about in terms of sentiment in markets. So if we get that move where we, uh, we get this fifth wave extension up into this target zone 4400, what you can imagine, similar to what we've experienced as we have been in this uh, wave three extension, suddenly the, the market narrative shifted from being um, well, well, from the, the majority of people believing we're in a bear market rally to quite a lot of chatter about the fact that we could uh, potentially now be in a new bull market. Now, to my mind, we are still, at this, uh, this stage, uh, we are in a bear market rally. And um, what I'm looking for is if we can get this move up into the 4,400 area, I'll certainly be watching for momentum divergence. What you'll note here is that as we made this high, we didn't get any momentum divergence. Now, where we get uh, where we get a peak like that in terms of momentum, and we don't get the divergence, that encourages the idea that we've got a wave three high. So, and this is why I'm looking for a, a wave four low or a new swing low to uh, to engage on the long side. Because more often than not, if we are going to uh, if we're going to make a move to the downside, or we're going to sorry, if we're going to see a correction or a reversal in the markets we're going to see some momentum divergence in play before we get that move. You can see here where we made, uh, we retested highs and we had a momentum divergence there. So what, I would, what I'd be anticipating we get here is a move into this support zone that we're looking to engage on the long side. When we get up into this area, what I would anticipate is that our momentum study does something like this and makes a lower high as price makes a higher high so that's our momentum divergence uh, confirmed. And then what we're watching for is bearish reversal patterns uh, in this area to engage on the short side. Now, what I'll be looking for then, uh, if we look on the weekly chart here. So this is our move here up into this zone. I'll be then targeting, uh, that's frozen, one second guys. I'll be then targeting an equality objective to the downside. Uh, equal to our first leg. So if I use the trend-based FIB extension, you can clearly see then what I'm looking for. 
So I'd actually be looking for a move down into the 3250 level. Also, what you want to bear in mind is we're heading into a particularly tricky period in terms of seasonality in markets. Uh, September historically has been a very perf uh, weak performing month. Uh, we then have uh, October also historically uh, a volatile month. But the, the slight fly in the ointment that we also need to factor in now as we move through September and October is that we then head into November and the midterm elections in the US. Now, historically, what you will find is uh, by some miracle, as, uh, as, the, as we get closer to these midterm elections, more often than not, you will see the markets rally. Now, uh, whether or not that's by some, uh, some form of uh, pure chance or, or, or some sort of a nefarious actor in the background, I don't know. But more often than not, all I'm saying is you will see uh, as we get closer, maybe three, four weeks out, markets will suddenly get a bid. You'll often find as well that um, data tends to improve miraculously. And so um, what I would anticipate is that if we can... If we get this move up into the 44 area, we get the reversal I'm anticipating. I'd certainly at a minimum be thinking about a move back down to 38.10 uh, and the cycle lows 36.50s. And if we get through there, then 32.50 is the downside equality objective. Uh, but regardless, what I'm anticipating is as we head into September, as, uh, as the big money players come back from the Hamptons uh, after Labor Day weekend, which is the weekend after this weekend, um, that we are going to see some, some volatility. So in the near term, I'm looking for one more push higher, and, and then I'm going to be looking to engage on the short side. Now, the alternative scenario is we don't get that uh, push higher, and we roll over from what is a pretty significant trend line here, the third test of that trend line, also significant. So what my marker is going to be in terms of <coughs> the idea that this, this correction is actually complete, will be any move through that 4080 on a closing basis, then I'll be looking intraday shorts. But for now, 4080 to 4100 is my target zone, and I'll be looking for that 4400 test to the upside. Now, obviously, this is going to feed in to the other equity indexes, so I'm looking for the NASDAQ. Uh, ideally, the NASDAQ will hold its current lows here. Uh, we may retest, but I'm looking then for the NASDAQ to make another push higher up towards 13,900, where once again, I'll be watching for bearish reverse buttons. Again, note we didn't get any momentum divergence on that last push into the high. So that again gives me uh, an additional confirmation that we should see one more high here develop in terms of the NASDAQ. YM, the Dow Jones, <clears throat> tested uh, briefly through its trendline resistance, got a nice rejection on the weekly time frame from that yearly pivot. Um, again, we didn't get any divergence here. So what I've been looking for, uh, let me just remove this and turn this uh, like so. So what we, a great uh, tool to use when you're looking at these um, wave patterns is if you can connect the wave one high with the potential wave three high, then that should tell you roughly where wave four should complete. Ideally, you're looking to see a three wave corrective move here. So if we get something like this and move down into the 3200, uh, 450 area into that trend line support, projected trend line support, obviously I'm way, I, I wouldn't be looking to just play a strike of that level. I want to see price confirm. If we get that, then we've got a nice five equals one here that will take us up into that high volume node, I think. Let's just measure that. Yeah. So if we can get that, uh, that test into the 32, uh, 450 area, watch for bullish reversal patterns, and then we're going to look to engage on the long side into the high volume mode, 34,600, and then from there I'm looking for bearish reversal patterns, momentum divergence to be confirmed, and I'll be engaging on the short side. Russell. A uh, similar situation here in terms of the Russell, we have a wave three high that didn't have any momentum divergence, we have pulled back. Um, if we, let's change this around here. Let's connect our wave one and our wave three high and clone that. Overlay it with our wave two low. 
let's redraw this into here like so. So any move here into that uh, trend line support, let's get our fifth wave target in line here. So we would be looking for a wave three high, a wave four pullback into the 1910, 1915 area. Bullish reversal patterns there. We engage on the long side, monthly projected range resistance and a five equals one objective gives us 2066. And from there, we watch for bearish reversal patterns, momentum divergence, and we will re-engage on the short side. The DAX, that's tested into its trend line resistance. Now, noteworthy, as the DAX tested into its trend line resistance, what do we have in play? we have momentum divergence. So this suggests to me that the DAX move is potentially done. Another thing that's important to note with the DAX is the DAX is, uh, made a new low, it tested, it took out the prior lows. It didn't close below, but it did take out the low. And that again is the first clue that maybe we've got some DAX, uh, downside here in the DAX to, uh, to consider. So what I'll be looking for in the DAX here is any correction against this current move. So anything back here into weekly projected range resistance or a test, the retest of the trend line, I'll be watching these areas to engage on the short side, looking ultimately for the DAX to break down here. Now, what you've got to bear in mind, uh, obviously the DAX heavily correlated to what's going on in Europe as we head into the winter, sadly, uh, certainly in Germany and, uh, and across mainland Europe, I think we're gonna see some concerns with respect to energy supplies, obviously, uh, related to the crisis in Ukraine. Uh, not that I'm looking to or suggest that, you know, the, it's, uh, it's enjoyable to profit from that type of scenario. But as traders, we've got to practically understand the environment we're operating in and what the fundamental drivers are. And so this energy crisis is likely to be a fundamental driver. So if we take out the 12,390 on a closing basis, even on the daily time frame, uh, the downside objective is an equality objective versus the swing higher here at uh, 14,950s. That gives us uh, 11,150 as a downside target for the DAX. So I'm looking for opportunities to short the DAX essentially uh, in the near term. The Nikkei, the Nikkei also uh, saw a bit of momentum divergence into that last high where we tested just shy of our equality objective. So again, I'm, uh, I'm starting to lean here to the short side in terms of the Nikkei and, uh, and our first clue as to opportunities to, uh, to set short positions is gonna be any break of this trend line support. You can see we've been in this channel. Let's clone that, that there. So we've got this channel. So any move through on a closing basis on the daily time frame, we close through the trend channel support 2800, uh, 28,000, sorry. I'm going to be looking on the short side. Certainly we think about a test back into 27,000, 26,900s, uh, this trend line support. But I'd anticipate we take that out. And uh, what I'm looking for in terms of the Nikkei then is going to be this broader corrective pattern to play out and get us down into the 23,000 level before then looking for the next leg to the upside. So again, bearish the Nikkei, bearish the DAX, ahead of these US indices at the moment. Still think we've got one push higher in the US indices. So that covers off my equity view. Let's move into Forex, and we are looking at the dollar index. I'm currently short the dollar index. Um, I don't, I'm not convinced that the, the, my short position is gonna work out. I, it's a risk-free trade. Uh, so there's no problem now. But um, what I, the reason for the engagement on the short side is double top, momentum divergence, and we've got a nice inside candle rejection, and, uh, and that pulled me on the short side. But really what I'm looking for in the dollar is I want to see one more high here into this 127 extension of this last corrective leg. And certainly any move into that um, 11030 area, I'm going to be looking for momentum divergence to be maintained. What we'd actually potentially have there will be triple momentum divergence, very strong signal uh, in my experience. And so if we get that set up, I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns above this 11020, 120, 11030. Uh, and I think we've got a decent chance then of trading down back into the 105 support area um, before we look for the next leg, potential next leg higher in terms of the dollar index. So if I'm anticipating that we get a new uh, swing high in terms of the dollar, then I'm also uh, need to 
look to the downside in terms of the euro. My target on the euro, as, uh, as those who have hit, been here for a while, 9760 is what we're looking for. And I think we've got the setup developing here now to get into that 9760. That will correlate with the dollar making that 11030. As most of you are aware, we've got Fed Chairman Powell talking tomorrow at the Jackson Hole Symposium, likely to have a hawkish slant to, uh, to his rhetoric, given the, uh, the loosening in financial conditions that we've seen through this bear market rally. I think he's going to want to uh, kind of stamp uh, stamp that out a bit. So I'm anticipating that we get a move down into this 97.60 from there. I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns based on momentum divergence to engage on the long side. I think we can trade back up into this low volume mode, 103.50s again, and see how we trade from there. Sterling, similar story, looking for another leg lower. Uh, I'm looking for a 115 test on Sterling. And if we get that and we maintain some momentum divergence here, Similar idea to the dollar and the euro. I'll be looking to fade that move uh, at least for a uh, for a pop back into this uh, prior highs here, one twenty three, as the first upside objective there. On uh, in terms of the sterling, moving to the yen. Uh, the yen, I think, if if the dollar index is going to make another high, I think the yen is probably going to make another high as well, and the target for that is going to be one forty at this stage. I'm not going to get bearish unless we take out this trend line support on a closing basis. So I'm looking for any pullbacks to find support into test that 140.50 area, weekly projected range resistance. And from there, as long as we maintain uh, momentum divergence here again, triple divergence potential setup, then I'm going to be looking to engage on the short side. And I think in terms of dollar yen, we can at least think of move, better move back into that 130.50 area. Euro yen. <coughs> So looking for this test of trend line resistance here, 138.20s from there, I'm gonna be looking on the short side and I think we've got a decent chance of trading down into the 130.30 area. At uh, this stage, it will take a close back through that trend line resistance to suggest that we, uh, we could trade higher here in terms of Euro Yen. Sterling Yen, similar type of situation. I'm looking for a test of trend line resistance. Ultimately, I'm watching for us to come back into this weekly projected trend line support 158.30s, anything in there, I'm going to be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And I think we've got a shot at, at 170 in terms of um, sterling yen. I'll just show you the setup there. We have this trend line resistance coming in, potential wedge developing. So that's going to be the play there in terms of sterling yen. Aussie yen, uh, watching how we trade here at 95.70s. If we can get if we get a daily close through that 9570s, I think we've got another run at the highs here up to 9895. But again, similarly to that sterling yen, my sweet spot for entry on this one will be back into this trend line support on the weekly time frame, but nothing immediate to do there in terms of Aussie yen. Similar story here, CAD yen. Love to see a test up into the 10820s, maintain this momentum bearish divergence, and uh, and that would certainly be a trade I'd be looking to uh, to play on the short side in terms of CAD yen, but nothing immediate for me to do. Looney, very choppy trades. Ultimately, I look for a test of the sending trend line resistance and the high volume node here, 132.80s, 133. We get up in there, momentum divergence, and I'll be looking to engage on the short side. The Aussie, He's looking at this pitchfork play here. We didn't quite test it. We've got a little bit of a pop. I'd, I'd, I'd be waiting. There's no need to chase this here at this stage. So I, I wait to see if the Aussie does test this pitchfork. Alternatively, if we close through it on a daily, daily close, then we've still got that 66.40 below us. And that, again, would coincide with the dollar making another high um, before rolling over. Let's take a look at gold. This is the other trade I've got on at the moment, um, this bullish reversal that we saw here from the support, the gap support zone. And uh, I'm holding a long position there against this swing low, looking ultimately for 1885, which is the equality objective uh, set up there in terms of gold. We'll see if that works out. Again, we've got this Jackson Hole tomorrow, we likely to see some volatility, things like the dollar yen, gold, the dollar, the euro sterling, these majors are likely to see volatility. So may get shaken out of this, but We'll, uh, we'll see, it's, uh, it's one that I'm going to hold for now. Silver, 
Uh, obviously trading slightly weaker to gold. I don't have a setup as such there in silver. Crude oil worked out nicely, traded into our 86.30 downside objective. A nice bullish reverse pattern, seeing some follow through. What I'm going to be watching now in terms of crude oil, and this is one to, uh, to pay attention to tomorrow, if we close crude tomorrow at or above current levels, that's a bullish outside reversal candle heading into Monday, Tuesday next week. I'm going to be watching for intraday pullbacks to get in on the long side. And certainly the first target on the upside is going to be a retest of the $100 level and, uh, and then on to this high volume load, 102.80s. But uh, we tested pretty much to the tick there, that equality objective versus the swing structure, seeing a nice reaction, nice bullish reversal pattern here on the weekly time frame. So I'm going to be watching Monday, Tuesday, intraday, four hour, hourly, watch for pullbacks to engage on the long side. Bitcoin holding on for dear life at this uh, trend channel support. I'm personally still looking for a 12,185 test. So any pop that we might see in Bitcoin related to those US equity indexes popping a little bit higher, certainly the NASDAQ has uh, been heavily correlated with Bitcoin. Any rejections then, and we take out this trend channel support, watch for that 12,185, uh, it heading into potentially, you know, September, October time, that, uh, that could be an interesting entry opportunity in terms of Bitcoin. Uh, Apple, tested into our trend line resistance, got just above there and pulled back. Now we are sitting at a pivotal point here for Apple. Let me just show you what I'm looking at. So if this is our one, two, this is our three, and you can see in a symmetry swing, wave four here, 166.50. Now, if we hold here, what's our target? Well, like I said before, five equals one. I would actually give us a move back into these prior highs here, 180.40. Can we maintain momentum divergence? If we do, potential for Apple to roll over there from five wave sequence. And certainly we think about a move back into the midpoint of the channel towards 150. Two others I'm gonna finish up with here. Euro Aussie, posted this one today. This is a stop run play. We're taking out the stops here. We've got plenty of momentum divergence. So as we test this weekly projected range for 142.80s, any bullish reversal pattern there, I'm going to be watching really closely for an opportunity on the long side and certainly think about a three-way corrective move back into this uh, resistance area here, 146.90s. Round things out with Euro Sterling this week. Any move up into 85.30s, I am going to be looking on the short side. I've got a downside objective on the weekly time frame here for an 80 cents test. Uh, is what I'm looking at there. So any move up into this trend line resistance, uh, equality objective versus the swing low here at 83.80s. We look for 85.30s to engage on the short side, targeting a move down into the 80 level. And that completes the whistle stop tour this week of the charts and setups I'm watching, certainly paying very close attention to these US equity indexes, got these majors, FX majors, dollar index and setups also, uh, Keep an eye on gold, and we want to see can crude oil put in that outside reversal on the weekly time frame. Great opportunity heading into the beginning of next week. Also, pay close attention tomorrow afternoon. Volatility lightly, and then as we head into next week, we have month end, uh, middle of next week. But then we head into September. Remember what I said about seasonality and the likelihood of uh, of some weakness to be seen in these equity markets. What I'm going to do here before I wrap up, I'm going to put two le links into the chat. The first one is the Tickmill Futures Group where I post that, uh, uh, that S&P 500 trade plan on a daily basis, uh, just, or you just request access and I'll, uh, I'll let you in there. And then the last link I'm gonna post is the Trading View um, link for the daily charts that I post with setups. I post setups there, uh, not just on daily or uh, the higher timeframes, also uh, four hour hourly timeframes for you to uh, to follow along. Okay, so with that said, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, you want me to take a look at an instrument, just post it into the chat and I'll do my best to give you a view on that. Um, I'll give it another 10 or 15 seconds here to see if any questions come through. If not, I'm going to uh, wrap this one up here and Hope that I've done a reasonable job of explaining my uh, my current views on the markets, and uh, and we will reconvene at the same time next week. So traders, as always, plan the trade, 
trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Thanks for your time and look forward to seeing you next week.